Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Nicholas Lionrider, and welcome back to Roger Williams Park Zoo. Last time, we were working on the uh, main portion of the World of Adaptations building, and uh, you might be wondering, Nick, what are you doing right now? You know, aren't we going to continue that? And uh, yes, we are. Um, so across from World of Adaptations is this little building here that I'm creating now, which is the Education Center. Now, the Education Center technically has no functional purpose other than it is a glorified restroom. Um, basically, during the uh, pre-corona days, it was used kind of as a uh, place, meetup place for a lot of schools and educational facilities to kind of like uh, just show off some ambassador animals and that sort of thing. Discuss, you know, uh, what it's like to be a zookeeper and that sort of thing. And um, it's kind of a shame because there was actually intentions on creating a reptile house in the new master plan um, in this uh, facility, but it looks like those plans have kind of fallen through, and I'm going to explain why in a, a little bit. But uh, basically, it's just kind of this mount, uh, mound building where it's kind of sunk into this giant pile of grass um, in the earth, but... It's a pretty decent building, so I kind of wanted to address it somewhere, and I thought World of Adaptations would be the best place. And the reason for that is because of that reptile building thing that I was mentioning. So, in the original master plan, um, well not the original master plan, the new master plan, the intention was this uh, new reptile house was going to house Komodo dragons and our new albino alligator but things changed and so the komodo dragon instead was placed inside of world of adaptations and so that komodo dragon now has a whole habitat inside of world of adaptations that i build later in this episode and the albino alligator is technically to my knowledge at the zoo at this current time however no one has been able to view it because it Obviously, with coronavirus, all indoor enclosures have been closed. So, uh, that was a thing I actually did recently. I uploaded all of my photos that I had collected reference images for back in February of the zoo, and uploaded them all to Zoo Chat, because I believe I am the most current, uh, kind of full, uh, tour of the zoo that included the interior portions of stuff like World of Adaptations and the greenhouse and stuff. Um, before coronavirus, of course. Uh, so, to my knowledge, the albino alligator was delivered on my birthday, uh, which is Memorial Day, and it has been sitting in the greenhouse at the front of the zoo since then, and to my knowledge, it's, you know, there, and whenever we get over the pandemic, it'll be ready for viewers to come and check it out. But uh, until then, you know, it's just kind of sitting there. So, which leads me back to uh, the point that I should bring up about the Education Center, and that's, we don't know what's going to happen to it. Um, it's safe to say they're not going to demolish the building or anything, but I don't really know what the zoo's intentions are anymore now that the kind of reptile house is kind of out of the picture. Because, um, like I said, the big two animals they were kind of promoting, the alligator and the Komodo dragon, no longer need a des designated habitat. So, instead... Um, I think it's probably just going to remain a restroom, um, which is kind of a shame because it's a really interesting building. And I think, um, if, if they filled it with some kind of animal, uh, or, or like basically, uh, treated it like another world of adaptation building with a lot of smaller animals, I think it could really kind of like lengthen the average zoo goers trip duration, if that makes any sense. Like basically... It would just kind of make it so that instead of doing the entire zoo in two hours, you can maybe stretch it to two and a half hours or so. Just to kind of like pad that kind of, you know, thing. And it, like I said, it doesn't need to be big animals or anything. Um, animals around the size of a photo dragon or an alligator, you know, would work totally fine. And the plus of this is it's technically in an area that doesn't have a dedicated theming. So they could kind of, you know, do what it, whatever animal they wanted. But uh, that's the other thing I should mention, uh, is I am not doing the interior of this building. This is probably going to be the only building in the entire zoo I will not be going over. Mostly because I've only been there 
been inside the building once in my entire life. I have been to this zoo probably well over a thousand times in my life, and yet I can't say I've ever, you know, been in here more than one time in sixth grade when I went on a school field trip to discuss the American Burying Beetle Project. <laughs> um, and literally the inside is kind of, uh, it's just a circle with a couple of maintenance sheds, a uh, zookeeper, a uh, backstage area, and a restroom. So there's nothing really in it. Uh, but a cool thing about this building is kind of what's in front. Because the entrance to the building is, uh, weirdly enough, more interesting than the actual building. So they have this cool fountain outside of the main entrance, which is uh, basically uh, this wall that I'm creating now. And it has a bunch of little like statues or reliefs of different aquatic animals. Uh, so it has stuff like ducks and otters and fish and that sort of thing. And so normally uh, I feel like most people would just be like, okay, I'm just going to make it like implied. Like I'm just going to, you know okay, we'll just kind of imply that there's some detailing or uh, something of that nature. But I was like, you know what? I could probably actually like make the mosaic. So I started using some of the primitive pieces uh, to basically start creating uh, those animals. So uh, the first thing that I started doing was the uh, river otter. So as you can see, I just kind of made it there. And uh, I used a, a few of the primitive pieces and then just kind of, you know, Made it vaguely otter shaped. I think I did a decent enough job. It's kind of recognizable as an otter. And uh, the issue that I noticed at the end of this entire process was obviously uh, the wall is uh, kind of thick, but obviously the primitive pieces are quite large. So some of them poke through the other side. And because of that, um, it, it kind of messes with the uh, decal a little bit at the end just because little bits and pieces of each side kind of um, poke through. But I, th I still think it looks pretty good and like recognizable regardless. So I made the uh, little mallard on the uh, left hand side and now I'm looking on a, working on a little box turtle type situation. Like I said, this fountain just has a whole bunch of just uh, small aquatic animals. Uh, I think right now I'm trying to make a fish. <laughs> the fish were, were kind of the hardest because I'm not really sure what kind of fish they are. And just uh, fish are kind of really detailed animals that, you know, have little bits and pieces attached to them. Um, and so it's kind of difficult to get a solid shape. But there I go. Uh, so that's basically finished. And then uh, to get the correct water uh, pressure correct, I basically had to kind of mess around with the waterfall and jet um, particle effects items. And then uh, it looks decent. I think it, it works uh, fairly well. It might be a little bit, you know, uh, crazy as a fountain, uh, you know, from a distance, but I think it actually works totally fine. Um, it's just kind of a fun area, like when you're younger, especially on like hot summer days, uh, you can just kind of go in and splash your face and stuff. Uh, of course with coronavirus, you can't do that, but, <laughs> um, you know, normally it was just used for like really hot summer days. Like you could just like literally like go in, you know, splash some water in your face and call it a day. Uh, so right now I'm just kind of rounding out the rest of the education center a little bit in the uh, surrounding area. Because in this video, I also kind of tackle uh, this building across from the Education Center. And I believe it's called the Conservation Center or something along those lines. But it's uh, another glorified bathroom is the best way to put it. Um, uh, what I found funny is um, you guys might have noticed that since maybe episode two or three of my series, I really haven't been making many bathrooms in the zoo. And, you know, I obviously made the first one uh, over in the, like, Zebra and Wildebeest episode. And then I included one inside of the Tusker house. But I haven't made any other bathrooms since. But that's because, for some reason, between Faces of the Rainforest and the Marco Polo Trail, there are six bathrooms. <laughs> Now, um, if you look at this zoomed out bit, you'd realize that's not even that far. Like, Faces of the Rainforest is, you know, kind of on one end of the, you know, the street, I guess. And then Marco Polo Trail is on the other. But there is one bathroom in Faces of the Rainforest, 
one inside of the Conservation Center, one inside of the Education Center, one inside of World of Adaptations, one inside of the Gift Shop, and one inside of the uh, Cafeteria. So, <laughs> literally, if you're on this half of the zoo, there's bathrooms everywhere. But if you're on the front half of the zoo, you basically have to either wait to go to the front entrance or the elephant area. But there are no bathrooms along the wetlands trail. There are no bathrooms in the North America section, none in the Asia section. You are exclusively kind of confined to either uh, peeing in the Africa area or the uh, this main strip, I guess, of the Australasia section. Uh... I finally got to place down a few more of my Pepsi machines that I, uh, you know, made way back in the day. And, uh, basically I'm just kind of doing the decorating. This is a very odd-shaped building, I'm not gonna lie. Um, there's nothing really of interest in this area. It's just kind of a thing that most people just walk by just because it's, again, there's no animals. So, it's just kind of decoration. Uh, I believe it's used kind of as a uh, backstage facility for the barnyard section uh, right next door. And uh, I think it also might be used uh, in part for kind of like a uh, keeper, um, ca or uh, what would you call that? Like a kitchen for uh, preparing food for the World of Adaptations animals. And so, um, yeah, it ba basically it's just kind of like uses just a... A backstage building that's not really backstage if that makes any sense uh and then on the outside i'm gonna be doing in the next episode a lot more detailing uh there's a lot of stuff that like you know i i wanted to uh cover in this episode but just in the interest of length i wanted to cut it uh you can see me here i'm playing with uh, different kinds of sign designs I, at first i thought oh i could maybe do an actual sign but then um I, I basically went with my usual, you know, custom font, custom sign type deal, which I've been d using a lot. I, I, in truth, I don't think I've really used many actual signs since the first episode. I feel like I've always just kind of decided, uh, might as well go for accuracy, so I always try to like make uh, custom signs whenever I can. So uh, basically, yep, I just, you know, I use my shapes. Oh, sorry, it's not the Conservation Center, it's the Conservation Corner. Uh, even though it's not a corner. Um, and so, uh, yep, I just drag it over, just slot it into place, and good. Uh, past that, uh, I start working on uh, the side of the building. Basically, there's some posters of all the different World of Adaptations animals, and some of the Australia animals that are no longer at the zoo. That, so they have uh, uh, emu uh, decal at some point and stuff. And uh, the reason I'm just coloring them in for now is because the next episode, I really want to focus on all of the wall murals and decals and stuff of that nature. Um, uh, basically, this episode, I wanted to get the rest of the actual uh, fun, functional habitats and stuff in World of Adaptations done on the inside. And then I was leaving next episode for probably the surrounding maybe wallaby habitat. And then, of course, the... Um, all the fancy murals and stuff that I know people are going to want to see. Um, because all of the habitats, the tree kangaroo, Komodo dragon, radiated tortoises, they all have fancy jungle backdrops and murals and stuff. Um, which anyone who's seen my workshop, they've been seeing, I've been doing those naturally, just using those kind of like pixel art pieces. Um, and so I just wanted to address that. Uh, right here I, I had a little bit of an error on the building shape. And you notice that a lot with uh, this build is I mess up the building shape quite a bit uh, a few times throughout the process of this just because it's such a bizarre shaped building. Um, San, who I had on last episode, actually noticed that um, in this episode when I eventually get around to making the wrinkled hornbill habitat, I miss there's a skylight in the uh, exhibit and so I need to add that back in in probably the next episode. But, uh, as you can see, it's just a lot of work, um, this is obviously 16 times speed, so it's all, it was multiple hours of work, and in reality, the reason I've been trying to get these episodes out quick is because my girlfriend, Julie, really wants to complain about Babarusa, so she is really looking forward to getting to the Babarusa episode, and so I want to please her the best I can and let her, you know, roast the, roast the pigs the best she can. 
but this episode, uh, I also did a little bit of the exterior of the um, World of Adaptations exhibit. So I did the King Vulture exhibit. I used Drax, uh, World of Birds, um, you know, what would you call that? Uh, set off the workshop uh, to kind of modify some of the birds. And uh, in a minute, you see me working on this beautiful King Vulture exhibit. As you can see, I'm just, I'm placing down trees and props, etc., etc. I had the nice mesh fencing over top. I'm adding a nice little uh, pole to put the King Vulture on. And so it looks all nice and I'm really happy with it. And then in a minute, you see this happen. I accidentally deleted the entire World of Adaptations building and then my game crashed. So I literally had to restart this entire King Vulture exhibit. And so, uh, luckily it wasn't too much work lost. It was like maybe like 20 minutes or whatever, but, um, it was annoying. And so I had to quickly, uh, fix it up. So you might see that, uh, there are slight differences in the, uh, one that I did before and the one I'm doing now. But for the most part, I, I, I like to think that, you know, I did it a lot quicker the second time and it's primarily the same thing. Um, and so, uh, you can see me adding a bunch of rope and stuff of that nature. Just a lot of climbing frames for the King Vulture. I haven't been able to get in there since last year, in truth. Uh, even in February, the aviary was closed. So I used, uh, Drax, uh, Andy and Condor, and basically just edited the, uh, col colors and stuff of that nature. Just because I think it's the closest to a King Vulture, um... He might have made a King Vulture by now anyway, but I thought eh, I could just literally use some of his birds and just kind of modify them a little bit, and that should be good enough. And then finally what I'm doing right now is working on the, I guess, Tawny and Kookaburra slash uh, Outdoor Wrinkled Hornbill habitat. And uh, past that, just kind of jumping back into the interior of World of Adaptations. So, while I normally don't do exhibit animal mods, I did really want to do a Emerald Tree Boa um, mod for this build. So, uh, the Emerald Tree Boa, I used the Yellow Anaconda, which you might have said, why didn't you use the Boa Constrictor? Wouldn't that have made the most sense? And um, the reason I chose the Yellow Anaconda is because they have a, they have a um, animation uh, pose inside of the exhibit, which basically shows them kind of curled up in in the traditional emerald tree boa pose so i basically um just you know recolored the yellow anaconda it was real it was a real pain because with reptiles you have to paint individual scales but i think it uh turned out really well so that'll be at the end of this video but uh right now i'm working on the indoor uh wrinkled hornbill enclosure so this is probably the coolest exhibit in uh world of adaptations it used to be the uh, tree kangaroo habitat. And so it's probably the most lush out of all of them. There's a lot of like cool rock work and jungle plants and there's a waterfall in it. And so um, I tried to compress it all into this small area. Obviously I had to take some creative liberties with like, you know, just how much I could fit. And I obviously didn't want too many plants and uh, rocks and stuff poking out the side. <laughs> Uh, because this wall is visible from the outside. So, um, basically past that, I'm just adding a lot of vines and stuff of that nature. I me messed around with a couple of new of the new tropical plants and that sort of thing. And, uh, past that, uh, I think I'm about to install the waterfall right now. Um, uh, cause the waterfall is kind of, I, I feel like it was way cooler with the tree kangaroos. This entire area used to be open um, when it was the tree kangaroo, it, you know, so there was no barrier between the guests and the animal. However, uh, since the wrinkled hornbills can fly, they had to install this kind of uh, crappy chain link fence. I understand why they did it, but it's obviously not ideal. Uh, what you see me doing here is I was uh, just quickly adding some lighting. Uh, just because that exhibit is normally really bright. And I feel like World of Adaptations in general just needed a lot of light. So in the final product, you probably see me uh, kind of add a bunch of different lights to, or light sources to the different exhibits, just so that, you know, you can actually see the animals a lot clearer. 
and not have them, you know, kind of in the dark, if that makes any sense. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm just adding a little bit of the temple wall detailing. Um, and then past that, I install my Emerald Tree Boa exhibit. Um, unfortunately, during the recording of this, the Emerald Tree Boa was curled up on the ground, but in reality, he normally just hangs out in the little canopy tree. And that exhibit also is home to a couple of different uh, smaller fish species. They have uh, a couple of, I guess there are some species of goldfish, I'm not going to lie. And they also have an, uh, a long neck turtle, which is kind of cool. Uh, I also want to shout out ZZ here for uh, uh, their amazing radiated tortoises. I wanted to throw them in there. Because uh, I, I just think they look really good. Like, even I, I, I could have made a mod using the Aldebra, of course, but I really like ZZ's tortoise. So, um, it was significantly easier just placing in those than, you know, making a whole mod just for, like, a two-second clip. Um, the Komodo Dragon enclosure. So, what I'm working on right now is the Komodo Dragons. Uh, it's a very small enclosure. Mostly because we have a small Komodo Dragon. Uh, there's a sign next to the Komodo dragon that's like shows like a full a grown one and then ours is like a little baby Arguably smaller than most Nile monitors in truth uh, So this exhibit is not very detailed or elaborate. It's got a couple of uh, Foliage things. There's some torn up cardboard and a little uh, stick in the background and there's a tiny tiny pond but since this exhibit was so small I literally couldn't even fit in a, an actual planet zoo pond, so I literally had to just make a fake water source using uh, primitive pieces. So that little uh, pond isn't actually functional, but you know, hopefully, it, you know, the welfare's turned off on my zoo. It's fine. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for the Komodo dragons. I'm just kind of cleaning up some of the other details of world of adaptations in general. And now we get to the uh, the dove habitat. So there's kind of this uh, species of dove that's very colorful that lives in, I suppose it's somewhere in Australia or Asia. I'm not really sure which, but basically it um, lives in this kind of like rocky habitat inside of the zoo. And so uh, I wanted to make it. I took a reference image, I can pull it up here. Um, it's kind of a nice little enclosure, and then since, uh, Drac didn't make any, uh, of this specific species of bird, I, you know, just made the, uh, bird myself. It wasn't that hard. I, I grabbed one of his smaller birds and then just changed the colors, and then, uh, I think it, it's totally acceptable. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, right now I'm just kind of rounding out the rest of the interior, um, there's kind of a window that mirrors the one on the outside towards the end of the exhibit, but um, past that, nothing too crazy. Uh, right now what I'm working on, this was filmed a like, day later or whatever. These are the corrections I had to make to the education center and kind of uh, just fixing it up since I didn't actually finish it the first time. Uh, there's normally these kind of like, uh, railings on the side that are chain link mesh, but of course I couldn't do chain link, um, because we don't have any chain link props. So instead I use these kind of window pieces, I think they work just as well. Um, and then just kind of covered up the side. And then another thing that I had to fix is the education center isn't actually a perfect circle. So that's kind of the weird thing. So if you see these holes in the background... These are where the supposed like alligator and Komodo dragon habitats were meant to be planned. And so what's weird is it basically sinks into the mountain. So the mound of grass literally rides up in these like kind of uh, cut out pieces, if that makes any sense. And then uh, from a top down, it just kind of looks like a hill on one side it's really weird again this building is so weird looking it's really cool looking but it's so weird architecturally um and so uh yeah so i just needed to clean that up and make it a little bit nicer uh, you see me messing around with a few different things and then the last thing uh in this entire episode is just me finishing the education center by adding the 
of course, uh, doors into the enclosure. So normally, most of the time, these doors are closed um, just because not many guests come in here. There's a sign that literally explicitly says there are no animals in this building. Go away. Like, like there's just a bathroom in here. So most people have no interest in coming in anyway. And then uh, past that, there's just some plaques uh, for uh, some people of interest. I'm not sure who they are. Uh, and they basically must have funded the education center. Um, again, so congratulations, you made a cool building and then put nothing in it. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, we're just kind of finishing up the uh, build right now. I'm just adding a couple of little details. There's a little trash sign. And there we go. Uh, so thank you for watching. And uh, I hope you guys all enjoy all of my little animals that I show off here. Uh, so specifically the Emerald Tree Bow is kind of our modded animal for this episode. And uh, yeah, so in the next episode, I'm gonna finish up the indoors of World of Adaptations with all the murals and uh, hopefully get to the wallaby enclosure. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.